Okay, so now let's answer the questions about the section three, chapter one. The title is the law of universal gravitation. So we'll answer the industry exam question about this title. The first question, show the following choices correctly describes the orbital relationship between Earth and Sun. So the Sun orbits Earth in perfect circle. Earth orbits Sun in perfect circle. Sun orbits Earth in an ellipse with Earth at one focus. Earth orbits the Sun in an ellipse with a Sun on one focus. So you know that the Earth is revolving around the Sun. So then you are going to eliminate the choices Sun orbits Earth. Eliminate this. Sun orbits Earth. Eliminate this. So B and D. Earth orbits the Sun in perfect circle or Earth orbits the Sun in an ellipse. So uh, Kepler said that the planet's uh, orbit is uh, not a perfect circle. It is uh, nearly a uh, circle, so it's an ellipse. So they are going to, all the planets will revolve around the sun on an elliptical path. Elliptical path has two focus, one focus in here, other focus in here. So then, so planets will be, will be revolving around this, um, circular path on the circular path so that in in one of the focus in here or in here there will be sun so sun will be at one focus so earth orbits the sun in an ellipse with the sun at one focus is the uh, correct answer for this uh, question second one is what data do you need to calculate orbital speed of a satellite so orbital speed means, in fact, it's talking about the tangential speed. All the satellites are um, uh, revolving around the planet. So let's think about that. Um, so here is a planet. This is the planet. And a satellite is revolving around this planet on a circular path. So let's look at a satellite in here. The mass of the satellite, because it's smaller than the planet, I'm going to write smaller m. For mass of the planet, I am going to put a capital M. And the, this, pla uh, this separation between this planet and the satellite is the radius of the circle. So R. And uh, because this satellite is questions about the orbital speed, which is tangential speed of the satellite. How can you calculate this tangential speed? We are going to uh, ask a question. What force keeps this satellite on this circular orbit? Of course, it is the gravitational force. This uh, planet is uh, pulling the satellite with gravitational force. So then I'm going to say that, yes, this gravitational force is the centripetal force keeping this satellite on the circular path. I will make them equal. Yeah, and centripetal force in here is gravitational force acting on the satellite, and this force is keeping the satellite on the circular path. So let's write equation for centripetal force. Mass of the satellite, which is small m, uh, tangential speed of the satellite, which is also known as orbital speed, which is squared, divided by radius of the circle, which is the separation between the uh, planet and the satellite. Also, it is the radius of the orbit, which is equal to r and v squared over r, is equal to gravitational force. We know that the equation of universal gravitational force capital G, mass one, which is the mass of the planet, capital M, mass two, which is mass of the satellite, small m, divided by separation between the mass or planet and the satellite, which is the radius of the orbit, but squared. So when we make the simplification, so it is M, mass of the satellite, mass of the satellite simplified. So these R and squared will simplified. You will get an equation Vt squared is equal to capital G, mass of the planet, divided by radius of the orbit. So if you get the square, you can get that equation. But equations, this uh, equations, uh, according to this equation, we can understand that orbital speed only depends on mass of the planet and the radius of the orbit. Mass of the planet and radius of the orbit only choice is going to be 
D for this question. Question number three. Universal law of gravity between two objects is one of the examples of inverse square law because the force is directly proportional to square of distance. First, let's write the equation. Equation tells that F is equal to capital G mass one multiplied by mass two divided by R squared, which is the separation between these two objects. The force is directly proportional to the square of the distance. No, it's not directly proportional. If we write uh, what this statement says, it, was be like, it will be like this. Force is directly proportional to uh, distance between two objects. And Rf must be proportional to R square, but it's not. F is inversely proportional to R square, so this is not correct. So then, this is not correct at all. The force is directly proportional to inverse square of the distance. So it means this, force is directly proportional, directly proportional, this is proportional sign, uh, inverse square of the inverse square in directly proportional to inverse square of the distance, yeah, one over R squared. So force is directly proportional to inverse square of the distance between two objects centers. So this is this seems to be the correct one. Yeah. Let's go with the C. Force is inversely proportional to product of two masses. So this says that force is proportional to uh, proportional to a product of the object's masses. Yeah, and M inverse proportional means one over. One over M1 times M2. This statement explains that this is not correct for that reason. The force is inversely proportional to inverse square of the distance between two objects. The force is the force is inversely proportional to means one over inverse square of the distance. Yeah, one over one over R squared. So if you go with this, it's going to be like this force is so this r squared will go up force will be square proportional to r squared so this is not correct that's why correct choice in here is the force is directly proportional to inverse square so this is directly proportional to one over r squared which is inverse square of the uh, separation or distance between the two objects center of mass G is uh, a form, G is a form from universal law of gravitation, which are the following formulas is used to find G. Now you are going to uh, write universal uh, gravitational force equation, capital G, M1, M2 divided by R squared. After that, go with cross product. So, G multiplied by M1 multiplied by M2 is equal to F multiplied by R squared. Let G alone by simplifying M multiplication of M1 times M2 divided by M1 times M2. So they will simplify. You will get G as F R squared divided by M1 times M2. F R squared divided by M1 times M2, which is C. And let's go with question five. Earth orbits the sun, mass of the Earth is given, sun, mass of the sun is given, at the mean distance, yeah, separation between Earth and the sun is 1.5 times 10 to the power 11 meters. What is the gravitational force on the, of the Earth on the sun? We are going to use the equation, which is F is equal to G, M1, M2 divided by R squared. Insert the given, all are given in here, 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 is G, multiplied by M1 is mass of the Earth, so 5.97 times 10 to the power of 24, multiplied by mass of Sun, so sun is 1.99 times 10 to the power of 30 divided by 
separation between them, which is uh, 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11 squared. So we will do all calculation, get your calculator, and then let's start 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times 5.97 times 97 times 10 to the power of 24 multiplied by 1.99 times 10 to the power of 30. This is a numerator, multiply the one, which is 7.9 times 10 to the power of 44. This is a numerator divided by in bracket 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11. Close the bracket, but squared, now squared. Answer is 3.5 times, 3.5 or 52 times, 10 to the power of 22 Newtons. This is the force applied by the sun on the earth. Also, it's this uh, reaction force, force applied on the sun by the earth, and they are equal in magnitude. So then this is, pardon, this A, is the answer. It's the gravitational force of the sun on the earth. Also, it's the gravitational force of the earth on the sun. So they are actually reaction force equal in magnitude of positive interactions. And six, two objects with two specified masses and specified distance separates them. If the distance between them increases by a factor of four, by what factor does the gravitational force between them changes? So we know that uh, force is uh, proportional to m1, m2 over r squared. Also, you insert t and you get inequality. Uh, this question is about the distance. You are going to change the distance. Distance increased by 4. So instead of r, you are going to write 4r because increasing by 4 means you should write instead of r, 4r. Let's write it. M1, M2 doesn't change, but instead of R, you are going to write 4R, but you will square this. So it's going to be this way, M1, M2, square of 4 is 16, square of R squared, which means you divide it. You see that this is divided by 16, which means force also must be divided by 16. So uh, force decreased by a factor of 16, or this question is asking change. If it is asking change, we are going to do it like this. 1 over 16 multiplied by f is proportional to 1 over 16 and 1 m2 over r squared. Yani, the force is changing by a factor of 1 over 16, or force is decreasing by a factor of 16. And in two cases, you can answer this question, but the question is about how to express it in terms of change. 1 over 16, because you multiply force by 1 over 16. So this is D. Question seven. If the distance between two, uh, between two centers of 0.3 kilogram billiard ball and 0.4 kilogram billiard ball is 0.3 meters, what is the approximate magnitude of the gravitational force between them? Again, we will use the equation G and one and two over R squared. And all are given, just you are going to write them. 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 is G. Multiply M1 is 0.3 kilograms. M2 is 0.4 kilograms. Separation between them is 0.3 meters, 0.3 of squared. So then use your calculator and then get the answer. 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 multiplied by 0.3 multiplied by 0.4 divided by 0.3 squared. Answer is uh, 8.9, 8.9 times 10 to the power negative 11. So 8.9 times 10 to the power of negative 11 Newton is the force between these two masses. Choice is A. The value of G in the equation is how much we know it is 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. And the unit G in the equation is what? 
And you can get G, uh, just you should let G alone to get its unit. So cross product to it. So G times M1, M2 is equal to FG multiplied by R squared, divide by M1, M2, because you should let G alone because you're looking for G's unit. That's why you should let it alone. H is equal to FG R squared divided by M1, M2. Now insert G has a unit which is equal to force Newton. This R distance meters, but squared divided by mass one kilogram, mass two also kilogram. So if you rewrite it, Newton times meter squared divided by kilogram times kilogram, kilogram squared is the unit of universal gravitational constant, which is going to be D for this question. Which of the following statement is correct? Mass and weight both vary with location. Mass varies with location, but weight does not. Weight varies with location, but mass does not. Neither mass nor weight varies. Mass does never change because mass means amount of matter. Amount of matter. This is constant wherever you take. It's 10 gram, 10 gram. But weight is force. Weight is force. And you can calculate the weight, negative of the weight by m times g. As you see, from G, according to G, it can change. For example, on the Earth, an object can be 100 Newton, but on the Moon, it can be less than 100. So if you go to another planet, it can be less than that. So it, it also weight depends on gravitational exertion of the gravity G. That's why weight changes from location to location. That's why we say the weight varies with location, but mass does not. This is the answer of this question. And question number 11, two objects with two specified masses and specific distance separates them. If the distance between them becomes half of the distance of the first time, by what factor does the gravitational force change? As we know that um, equation F, F is proportional to M1, M2 divided by R squared. It is the initial case, then later you make the distance half. So you, instead of R, you are going to write R over two. M1, M2 is, doesn't change. R over two, squared go so it which means r is f is proportional to we don't know if it's f not we are going to write later proportional to m1 and m2 divided by we should square r over two you should square both numerator and denominator r squared over square of two is four and after that flip this num denominator r squared over four and then rewrite it like this m1 m2 so multiplied by four divided by r squared. You see that you multiplied it by four. So right side also, if multiplied by four, left side also must be multiplied by four. That's why force changes by a factor of four. Also, you can say that force increases by a factor of four. This is the uh, solution of ministry exam questions about uh, uh, Chapters one, section three, title, universal law of gravitational gravitation, that's all.